Welcome back. This is, uh, I don't even know what number we're on, but um, today's session is going to cover 1D meshing. Um, but don't let me forget, I do I do want to cover, you know, RBEs and RB2s and things in, in 1D meshing as well, even though they're not in this kind of 1D mesh section. Um, but what is in this 1D mesh section? We have the ability to create beam sections. We have the ability to obviously create a 1D mesh. Uh, this 1D mesh has a kind of secondary icon that will allow you to do some cool reviews of 1D mesh, so I hope to show. Uh, and then finally, the section property um, will allow us to do, it, it's a very broad tool, uh, but what I'm going to do with it is going to take this idea of going from CAD to a 1D section. So, you know, extracting, interpolating a 1D section from CAD to kind of assign to your element. So uh, that's kind of the workflow that we're going to do. Um, I usually start with making a 1D mesh. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. <clears throat> Select that icon. Uh, we have all different options in here. So all of the, the 1D meshing has now been kind of ported to a GUI-based workflow. Uh, so I do have the option to select lines. Um, I don't, my preference when I always build these kind of like GFIMs um, and I have to do 1D meshing, I usually just do nodes, right? So I'm looking, I'll pick like a line of nodes or a set of nodes. Um, and that's kind of how I want my elements to be made. So you have you usually use a, the 1Ds when you have a little more larger elements. It's a little more discrete. Um, that's not as big of a deal to, you know, select like five or six nodes in, in which you want uh, <clears throat> your elements to be made. Um, so I'll just kind of, you know, show how the tool works. Uh, select one, you know, kind of make this path. You'll get a little preview. And then the little micro dialog here is going to say what it's going to make. So you pick your element type, uh, the configuration. You can either do a density method or the size of the element. Okay. And you can also ask it to, to match uh, the 2D mesh, the underlying 2D mesh as well. Okay. Um, so I've selected my nodes. Uh, I do have the ability to select a property if I have one already made. So if I want to assign a beam section to these as I make them, I certainly can. Uh, it's not mandatory. You can just make the elements and they can kind of be blank for the property and we can update them in many different ways. So I'm going to go ahead and hit uh, create. Okay. So I made a beam elements here. Uh, between each of the nodes that I selected. Okay. Um, if you did want to capture, you know, kind of this whole line of nodes, I would uh, suggest that you maybe do something like Alt by Path. So I'm holding Alt on my keyboard, and you'll see it'll grab those nodes in the path. So between two points that you click, um, and now it really doesn't matter what the size of it is. It's just gonna, you know, make a beam on each element. <clears throat> okay. Okay. So creating the the the, the beams, not difficult, right? Nothing uh, super crazy here. Um, next, usually we would like to apply a beam section to these. So, because um, these don't really mean anything, right? They have no, no value um, unless they have a beam section. Uh, so I'll go ahead and select beam section. And today I'll just do standard sections. So these are just going to kind of be a, a library of sections that we have in which I can come and pick from um, all sorts of different ones. Not that you're limited to these, but this is just what I'm going to do for today. Use lots of T's and you know, give this a name, T section, if I so choose. Um, and if you're in the NAS Trainer OptiStruct profile, if you hover over the dimensions, you know, if you change your your section type, you'll get different options for you know how many uh, a T needs certain number of parameters to define it versus an I beam versus a rod. Um, if you hover over this, you'll get a little pop up of what these dimensions are. So uh, kind of looking at this, that looks fine. Um, I actually have no, you know, you know me, I have no idea of what's actually going on in my model and how big anything is. So uh, it looks like an element size of 20. So uh, these are probably fine. I want it to be a little thicker. Just change these. And yeah, good enough for government work. Okay. <clears throat> I'll hit close. So that beam section has now been created. Um, so now we might be asking ourselves, well, how do you, how do you put that? beam section on uh, the, the, the element. Okay. Um, a few ways to, to do this. Um, so I can come and change my selector to elements. But if I'd like, I can you know come and do maybe elements by uh, this advanced selection by config. So the three dots, grab my beams or my bars or whatever ones you'd like to pick. Um, and I can right click and edit these elements. <clears throat> and I can give them a property. 
Okay, so it's asking for a property, not a beam section. So something to keep in mind here. Um, if I don't have a property uh, kind of already made, um, when this says unspecified, I can actually right click and create it. Okay. Um, so usually defaults to P shell, but we can just come in here and say P beam. And then the beam is going to ask for the beam section. I know that's kind of convoluted, but that's just the way that this kind of works for now. And I'll select that section and then it fills out all of the necessary information on here. Okay. Uh, nothing else is super critical for 1D meshing at this moment. Okay. Uh, so those elements now have that property and that beam section on that property. And usually what we like to do is we like to view that in three dimensions. So all of our viz options are down at the bottom. <clears throat> can select this icon here for display 1D beams as 3D elements. And now you can see my, my T section accordingly. Okay. So this is, this is okay. Um, usually you, you make these beams, especially for novice users, you're gonna make a bunch of beams uh, you're going to apply sections. You're going to go back and realize, like, oh, this is, it's not the right way I wanted it. Or one of these elements, you know, is twisted 90 degrees or something weird happens ultimately. Um, so that's why all of these 1D meshing tools, this option for align, orient, and offset um, are here as well. So, so back in the 1D meshing, um, <clears throat> we have options for alignment. Okay, so I can select 1D elements and align either with a system axis. Um, or anything like that. So if there was one element that was going crazy, uh, you could pick it and change its system. Um, so you can see anything from here. You can even do things like, uh, you know, pick a in one and in two direction. You can also use a plane. There's all different kind of options in here uh, to do for the alignment. Okay. And you can select multiple uh, elements. And I will also say that the selection is limited to just 1D elements. So even though I'm dragging a big box, none of the shells are getting picked up because this tool doesn't work on shells. It only works on 1D elements. So uh, that's kind of nice. Uh, back here. So the alignment is fine. You're going to use this uh, a lot of times if you want to change multiple beams to a, you know, uh, put them in like a radial system. If they're making your frames or uh, your, your fuselage bulkheads, those types of things, you can obviously select all of them and pick a system in which you want the principal axis to be aligned to. Um, the orientation also does does a similar thing. Um, it's just a little more, uh, I don't know, uh, clicky, I suppose, um, more of kind of individual one by one. Um, so the orientation allows you to, to do something, you know, just like rotate this beam. These icons will allow you to rotate 90 degrees. <clears throat> you can also offset normal to shells. Okay, which is what this will do by default. Okay, so the normal being the, uh, usually it's the Y axis. Yes, green Y axis. Uh, normal to the shells. <clears throat> but also you can just do a rotation manipulator. So if you didn't want 90 degrees and you wanted 45 degrees, you can come in here and, you know, use this manipulator to rotate, to type in the, the degreeage that you'd like this rotated by. Uh, but usually normal to shells is going to be what you're going to want. So I suggest you just do that. And then finally, the <clears throat> the last, oh, I keep escaping too much. The last option in here is offset. Okay. Um, so the idea here is that you can select an element or multiple elements if you'd like. And then once again, we can offset to adjust to the shell that they're connected to. I don't think this, this shell has any property to it, but um, we can give it a quick shot here. Yeah, okay, so it does. Um, so these will allow you to kind of offset to the shell thickness. You just have to find, you know, do you want it positive base or negative base, and then different adjustment options in here uh, for the shell. And of course, if you don't, or if you don't really care, you can do this manually as well. So if you know that this needs to move, anything like that, it can be done uh, manually. Okay. So everything that used to be um, in a panel in the old view is now uh, going to be um, kind of in these these couple of icons here, as well as the pins. Right, you can come and change degrees of freedom that you would like um, on or off. Okay. So everything from alignment, orientation, offsetting, and pins. Um, so my personal workflow, mostly just because I 
don't really think through things that I do before I actually do them is to make a bunch of stuff first, uh, see if <laughs> see if it worked, and then I'll go and edit accordingly. Um, uh, this little magnifying glass icon is, is quite nice. It's not going to be super interesting here because all of these beams are the same, but this allows you to do um, some different different kind of review options. So this will um, allow you to either contour or vectorize the area, inertias, moment, uh, you know, shear modulus, those different types of things. Um, it just kind of gives you a different way to view the data, right? So whether you want these contour plots, remember these all are the same beam section, so um, they all have the same area. So my contour is just a single color, but uh, this will give you kind of all of the information that you're kind of looking for. Um, just kind of what you want to plot and how you want to plot it, whether you want that to be a vector or a contour plot. Um, so I think this is, is something very cool. Uh, if you wanted to look at like, you know, inertias, you know, the inertia value of a, a variable stringer or frame, um, you know, you can plot that graphically now, right? Whether you want a vector plot or an area plot. Um, so kind of a very nice tool uh, to have. Wonderful, getting short on time. Let me um, go ahead and turn on my solids, and I'm just going to isolate uh, my solids. Oh, wait, show all. OK, there we go. Uh, <clears throat> so let's pretend. Well, let's not actually pretend. Let's just do it. I'm going to take this, um, what have we been calling these, frames? One of these frames uh, and isolate it. Let me go elements. Uh, hide all my elements in the background. Okay, so the idea here is that I like to go and you know capture this beam section, this cross section um, from the CAD, right? So what we can uh, do is this is the section property tool. Um, the way that this property tool works, um, it does need target beam elements first, right? So uh, this has to be kind of used in conjunction with the 1D mesh. So what the 1D mesh will allow us to come do I'll come and pick lines now because I have no geometry. I will essentially just seed a 1D mesh onto this part, give it an element size of 50, go ahead and hit OK. okay. So now I have a bunch of beam elements. That's pretty fine, but whatever. Uh, now the next question that I'd like to ask is, you know, I want you, uh, this happens to be a pretty constant cross section, but let's just, you know, make it not constant. Let's go over here. Yeah, beam, you know, 50 again, and hit play. Okay, uh, so now it doesn't have to be constant cross-section, but uh, what I'd like to actually do is I'd like to take these 1D elements, so I will select these 1D elements, and I'd like to measure from the solid. Okay, so it says select source elements. Like I said, this tool is pretty, pretty bonkers because it can actually do this kind of 2D or 3D reduction. So if you had a 2D, you know, if this was meshed with 2Ds, I could reduce that to 1Ds. So I, my, my input options could be current elements or current solids or current surfaces. Uh, this happens to be a solid. Select my solid. And then I have a few options here. And the one that's probably going to be most applicable to us in Aero is going to be not a single cut because what this is going to do is it's going to look at all these elements and just give them all a, you know, from a single cut, they're all going to be the same. Uh, that's not what we want. We actually want to cut each beam. And what we're going to see now is a little preview of what each of these beam sections is going to look like when it gets cut, which is why I wanted to do something over here on this kind of right hand side because, um, you know, this left hand side is all pretty consistent. <clears throat> Um, this allows you to change the weighting, whether it goes from node A to node B, which where you want the cut, um, and that will be graphically interpreted here. Um, and once we are, you know, happy with this, uh, there's a few other options for planes, or if you want to cut the nodes instead of the elements, um, we can go ahead and hit the check mark. Uh, the one D viz state is uh, currently not working, but if we were to go and look at um, each one of these beam elements and say right click and edit it. Uh, you'll see that it has this new property that's been assigned that has this beam section in here. Okay, so 
<clears throat> uh, the last thing to show are the um, uh, the, uh, the RBEs, like I said. So let me come and just show elements because this is normally how we will do RBEs. We usually do RBEs in a little wagon wheel. Uh, and these are under uh, model for s some reason. But we have an RBE2 and then the drop down for RBE3 or also a rigid body. Okay. So I'll switch to RBE3. Obviously, there are going to be node selections that you need to have in there. So we can either, uh, you know, just come and start clicking node, 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 node. And what you're going to see is as I click each one of these nodes, this uh, dependent node, in the case of an RB3, the kind of middle node, is just going to be this weighted, this kind of centroidal node, right, dependent on XYZ location. So, you know, ideally, if we were to select all the nodes in the circle, there's a better way to do this, by the way, but just showing. Uh, that's going to be the center of the circle, right? Um, so I have 20 nodes that surround it. Uh, the dependent node is being calculated for us. All of the options for weighting and degrees of freedom on dependent and independent uh, nodes is in the micro dialog box. You can also move the dependent node if you so choose. Uh, but usually the weighted average is kind of what you want. If it's not, you can always come and pick a dependent node. So maybe you want your dependent node back here for some reason. I don't know why, but you certainly can. Clear that out, it goes back to center. And I'm going to say, OK, that's perfectly fine. Thank you, RB3. That was a lot of clicks. I would highly encourage you to probably do something like the edges selection. Instead of having to click the whole time, you'll just be able to do kind of one or two clicks dependent on feature angle, and that will make your RBE for you. So uh, the RBE and the RBE2 work uh, essentially identically. They just depend on an independent switch. And um, the RBEs and RBE2s can be um, created quite quick, quite quite quickly um, with this method. So once again, edges. I encourage you to use edges. Oops. To make your 1D elements. Um, okay. So uh, show the creation of the RBEs. Uh, the reason that I show this is because next time, our next episode is going to talk about connectors, which does a lot of this for you in the background in one click very nicely. Okay. Um, so I, I do like to end with, with RBs because normally we'll do like RBs and we'll connect them with a the beam element, which we just learned how to make, right? So we just learned how to make a 1D. Right? And I could just, you know, pick two nodes. They don't have to be this kind of line of nodes like I was talking about. Okay. Make a beam element. Probably want that to be one element, but um, just pick the right size. So, and we'll call that a, you know, you call that a bolt, and we'll go from there with the connectors. So that's what we talk about next time, our connectors. Um, as always, hope everyone's doing well.